Hello everyone, I hope you guys are all having a fabulous Monday. Today I'm coming at you with our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. So pull up your chair, grab your coffee, let's go to work and let's get this thing started, shall we? Uh, number 99. Uh, and before I continue, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking and that is my Chanel GST the black caviar leather with the gold hardware. I'm kind of excited to be switching out of this this week. Uh, I have so many things in there. I've just been using it uh, to death and it's time to use another bag. All right, so let's get started <clears throat> with the very first question, shall we? From Norel Ravizi. My mom had this bag in storage for 10 years and it now smells very musty. Do you have any ideas as to how to get the smell out? I've been airing it outside for the last two weeks, but the smell is still there. This is a great, great question. And, uh, um, you know, I think when it comes to a musty smell or with cigarettes, I think those are the two hardest odors to get out of a handbag, especially because it starts to kind of seep into the leather or seep into the canvas or whatever it is. And it's really tricky because whenever you want to try to remove an odor, I feel that some, I feel that some products end up masking it and then you have so many different layers, so many different smells that it's kind of nauseating. Uh, however, I will have to say that one of the things that I have used in the past for musty smell for cigarettes, I, I really have to say that the Loving My Bags bag candies works like a charm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the first time I tried these out, uh, it was actually because of a client. Uh, I was selling one of her handbags and it had a really strong uh, cigarette you know, smell. And she sent these to me. Now, while it didn't 100% completely get rid of the cigarette smell, uh, I really feel that it helped immensely. I, I would have to say that it either reduced the smell by 75%, uh, 65, 75%, something like that. Uh, but it really, really helped. And uh, I just think these are wonderful because I don't feel that it's masking it too much. And I don't feel that you just have so many different smells going on. I feel like this really just rips the, the smell right out and kind of uh, replaces it with the scent that these have, which is vanilla. So if you don't like vanilla, I don't recommend them. I personally like vanilla, so I think these smell fantastic. Uh, but I really do recommend these. And um, I, I think ever since then I have bought two or three, di I've bought them two or three different times. And they retail for, I think they're 10 or $15, something like that. I can't remember. But these are phenomenal. These are fantastic. I think it's a whole lot better than putting, uh, you know, Febreze on them or, uh, what's it called? The, uh, the dryer sheets, because I think those kind of, you know, add to the mustiness, uh, but try these out. Hopefully this works out and that way you can enjoy, uh, your handbag. All right. Next question from Andvari Olson. Why is the resale value such a big deal? I hear everyone talk about it as if they're going to detest the bag the following day, laughing out loud. It's never even been on my radar. I understand taste change over time, but still, I'm really curious. Sorry if this sounds like a dumb question. <clears throat> This is not a dumb question at all. I think this is a fabulous, fabulous question. And I think that when it comes to resale value, the only time uh, that I can think of that it really, really comes into play is if you have the type of collection that is like a handbag carousel, kind of like what I've talked about before. Uh, so before one handbag can come into your collection, one has to go out, you know, so you're constantly rotating the merry-go-round that we, we discussed last week. I think that's when resale value plays a major, major role because uh, if you're going to be doing that often, then you want to make sure that whatever bags you do end up buying, you will be able to get some of your money back, if not all of your money back. However, if you have the type of collection that you have forever bags, then I don't think that the resale value is such a big deal because you end up buying bags that you know you'll end up having for years and years and years and uh, either you won't get rid of them, you'll pass them down or, you know, a resale value wouldn't be that, that big of a factor on it. So I think that it's either one of those two, at least for me anyways, I can only speak for myself. Uh, but no, I think that is a fantastic, fantastic question. Next question from Bon Bon Zito. I would love to get the Louis Vuitton Neverfull in MM or the Favorite. I feel like the Favorite is so versatile that I would use it so much more since it can be crossbody or a clutch. Since there is no Louis Vuitton boutiques in the state that I live in, it makes my decision that much harder since I can't see them or try them on. I'm pretty set on getting the Favorite, but the question is, do I get the MM or the PM? This is a great, great question. Uh, I think the favorite is is uh, a great handbag in either the PM or the MM size. However, I feel that if you want to go for versatility, and even though you can still carry it as a crossbody, as a clutch, or as a handbag, I feel that the MM size is the best way to go because you don't have to go super compact, and yet it's still big enough to carry a lot more of your essentials with you. Uh, so that's that would be my vote would be the MM. Uh, but again, the PM is still great. It's very very cute. I just feel that it's too too small for my personal taste. But um, whichever one, I wish you good luck. 
Guess who wanted to say hello? Want to say hello, baby? Want to say hello, to babies? Hello, my pup, pup Eddie. Pup, pup Eddie. You want to say hi? You want to say hi? <laughs> now he went and sat down uh, over there. Uh, okay, Nathalie Dahlia. Uh, I've been using my Neverfull MM and Damia Ben since I bought it last year for graduation, like close to every day. I commute from Jersey to New York City for work, so it fits everything perfectly. What should I go for next? A delightful MM and monogram or the classic Speedy 30 and Damia Ben? I'm currently saving like crazy and I would love either or, but I'm stuck. Help. Um, okay, so since you already have the Neverfull MM, personally I would go for a little bit of a variety and go with the Speedy in either Dami Ben or the Monogram to again add to the variety of your collection. Uh, however, if you definitely need something that's going to be a lot more, uh, a lot easier to be able to carry than the classic Speedy because it can get a little heavy at times or it can be a little cumbersome, uh, then I would go for the Delightful because obviously you could just put it on your shoulder and you could still be hands free. With the Speedy 30, you can't do that. Uh, so again, if you want to add a variety to your collection, then I would go for the Speedy in Monogram or Damia Ben, but if you absolutely want to be hands-free, if you want something that's a little bit more comfortable, then I would go for the delightful. Next question from Mini Mazumdar. I am looking for an everyday bag and it's really important that it be durable, large, not prone to losing its shape or scratching too much. I'm debating between the black Chanel GST, the Louis Vuitton GM and Vernie in a dark color, or the Louis Vuitton Empra in a large bag style such as the Montaigne. Which leather will be the best long term in terms of wear and tear and which one would you recommend for an everyday work bag that can also be dressed up for formal occasions? Occasions. Uh, this is a great, great question. Uh, okay, so I think all three are great options. Um, let's start with the black uh, GST. I love the black GST. Obviously, that's the one that I'm using right now. Uh, I don't know if you want to go for silver or gold, or, uh, gold hardware, uh, but I really do like the shape of it. I think it's very easy to be able to transition from day to night, uh, especially from a work bag to something a little bit dressier. However, it does tend to lose its shape on the sides. Now, mine has kind of um, has kept its shape for a very long time but as you can see it is starting to kind of go so you'll see it here especially if you buy this pre-loved um, they a lot of them will have that little sag and let me show you right there you'll see that and then once that goes it'll start to get a little bit worse uh, but I still think it looks pretty good for as long as I've had it uh, and let's see the Louis Vuitton Empreinte I love the Montaigne you guys know my love for the Montaigne uh, I think that bag will definitely keep its shape. Uh, the leather, you don't have to worry about it. You can use it during the rain, snow, what have you. And I think it's, uh, it's a wonderful bag. I don't necessarily know if it's the best bag to transition from day to night and be able to use to formal events. Uh, and then the uh, Vernie, the Vernie, the colors are always such a beautiful pop of color. Uh, they're very, very vibrant. Uh, it is a large bag. It might be a little fussy to get in and out of, especially if you want to use it as a work bag. So they all kind of have their pros and they all kind of have their cons. Uh, but if I had to come down to it, um, if you don't mind too much of the sag on the GST in the long run, then I would go for that one because I really, again, I really like the size, especially in uh, the caviar leather. However, if you want something, no matter what, that's going to be very, very carefree, very, very comfortable to use, then you can't go wrong with the Montaigne. So again, I think all three options are wonderful, uh, but it would my choice would be between the Montaigne and the GST. The GST is a little bit dressier. The Montaigne is just a little bit more casual, but I think uh, they're both phenomenal, phenomenal bags. And uh, I don't know if that helped, but <laughs> hopefully that was able to give you some uh, pros and cons on each. Monster Truck Fan. I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way shape or form I don't own a single luxury item but I love watching videos about them on YouTube so my question is this since they cost so much and are supposed to be such high quality why do they have to be babied rain spots dirty coin smudges never set it on the floor etc etc I guess I just don't understand spending such a huge chunk of change on something you can't just toss around and whatever whenever with I don't buy cheap or inexpensive bags I spend a considerable amount I think on bags I do purchase so I understand wanting to take care of them. That's not what I'm getting at. But the bags I purchased had better stand up to whatever I dish out and most certainly the weather because I don't switch out my bags on a daily basis. Would you mind enlightening the likes of me who kind of gets it but not really? This is a great, great question and I did not take it um, in a bad way at all. Uh, and I, you know, I can only speak for myself. Obviously, I can't speak for anyone else. But when it comes to these handbags and, you know, the price tags that we pay for them or the, the prices that we pay for them, 
I personally want them to last as long as possible and look as great as possible for as long as possible. Uh, you know, and I think that if I had the type of income where if, you know, if I damaged a $5,000 handbag, then, you know, no big deal. I can just go next week and get another one. Then I don't think it would be such an issue. And I know there's a lot of people out there that can and kudos to them, but I am not one of those people. And I think that it's definitely personal preference, you know, because whether you decide to spend your money on a luxury good, such as a handbag, shoes, a car or whatever it is, then, uh, for me, that's what I would rather spend my money on. You know, I don't have, uh, an expensive wardrobe as far as clothing goes. You know, I'm very, very um, simple when it comes to that. And I really don't like to spend my money on anything else except for handbags, uh, more so than anything else, because that's an obsession that I guess you could say that I have, you know, and uh, my mom is uh, one of the types of people that views a handbag as its sole purpose just to carry around her items. She does not like fussy handbags. She does not like expensive handbags at all. She just wants to be able to use it, throw her things in there, and then that's it, you know? And, um, and I think that's okay, but I can only speak for myself, as I said before, that I just want them to look as great as possible for as long as possible because I just, if I'm going to spend that type of money, if I'm going to work that hard to put that money towards something that I really like, then it better look very, very great uh, in the long run, you know? And uh, something else that I also have to say is that when it comes to luxury goods, I think that a lot of people assume that luxury goods are the best thing, are better than contemporary brands, for example, when it comes to handbags. But I say that loosely because, as we've all discussed on Minx Mondays, there are a lot of uh, luxury brands out there who have had a lot of issues standing up to the test of time as far as quality goes. So that's not always the case, you know, but I, I again, I just feel that it's definitely personal preference, and um, I think some are a little bit... Um, more carefree than others, but at the same time, I don't want to ruin them. And if I had a million dollars, if I was a millionaire, then I don't think it would be such an issue, but I am not <laughs> far, far from it. Uh, so I think that's why for myself, uh, I want them to look great. So I, I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, but I think that, um, I think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal question. And my mom's always telling me, she's all, where did you get this love for handbags? She says, she says, it's definitely not for me, you know? And my mom also views cars, um, you know, as wanting to get from point A to point B, she doesn't really give it much importance, but there are other things that she rather spend her money on than anything luxury. So personal preference definitely p uh, plays a major, major uh, part in that. Uh, but fantastic question. Uh, okay, Fern Fancy Face. What do you think of the resale value on Louis Vuitton Emprunt bags, such as the Speedy in Noir or the Montaigne? Fantastic question. Okay, so when it comes to Louis Vuitton Emprunt bags, I think that uh, the older Speedies definitely didn't hold their value uh, as well because they lose their shape so quickly, you know, and there's really no structure to it. The Montaigne, however, that bag, my goodness, I have seen it pre-loved for like $20 less than what it is retail. And you can see the wear on it because it's such a structured bag. It holds its shape, it holds its value, and the leather just looks fantastic on it. So you don't have to worry about the embossing kind of um, flattening out like you would with the Speedy. However, now with the new Speedy that we see that came out, uh, I did get to play with it a little bit. If you guys saw my vlog, last week. Uh, it looks like it's a lot more structured. It looks like it's going to hold its shape a lot better. Who knows? We'll see in a few months, um, you know, how it wears and stuff like that from uh, people that do end up purchasing it. Uh, but I don't think it's such a shame too, because Emperor bags are very, very expensive. And to think that the Montaigne is really the only one that I can say that holds its value so, so well, um, is kind of a bummer, I would have to say, you know, and one of the bags that I really, really liked is the St. Germain. Uh, it's very similar to a Chanel, uh, classic flap, but I like the shape of it. I like the size. I like how much you can fit in there. The chain is to die for, uh, but it does not hold its resale value, you know? So, I, I'm hoping that this new Speedy will definitely change that, but the Montaigne, I mean, is, in, is insane. Is insane how well it holds its value. It's such a beautiful bag. <laughs> it is very expensive, <laughs> but you get what you pay for, right? Because it's all leather. It's literally all leather, and you just have the uh, fabric interior, but 
I think on prank bags are going on the rise. Uh, okay, uh, Jana Kaya Seven M. I'm so sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, I love red. <laughs> I have a jumbo in beige, a classic medium large in black, and I would now like to add a red Chanel bag. But big question is if it should be a medium large or a mini. I am tall, 178 centimeters, and I believe that, um, I think I did the math, I think it was five foot 10, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, what do you think? Thank you and good luck. <laughs> I do need the luck. Okay, and I love how you said that, I love red. Just one simple sentence, because I am a fan of red myself. Uh, okay, so when it comes to red, obviously the color, I think, is a neutral. I would put it right up there with black or with, um, with, uh, you know, tans, taupes and stuff like that, or, or whites. And, uh, if I had to, for example, if it was me, if I had to add a pop of color, as much as I love red and as obsessed as I am with red bags, obviously we all know, you know, cause I talk about them so often, especially within the last couple of weeks, I know that myself, I would still end up gravitating towards the black bags or the beige bags, um, even though the red itself is a neutral. Plus, it has to be the perfect red. Uh, so for that matter, I personally would have to go for the mini because the mini would be able to give you that nice pop of color that you wanted. It would nice, it would be a nice uh, accessory, a nice uh, way of incorporating a color if you were going to go with all black, say, or something uh, a little bit more casual like jeans and a white t-shirt. So having something smaller, I think, would would really make the outfit stand out, in my personal opinion. Uh, and that way, you can use it when you're going, uh, when you want to go compact, when you want to go out to dinner or something like that. Um, the medium large would definitely be something that I would use more so of a daily bag. So if you want to incorporate that red and use it daily, then I would go for the medium large. But if you want just the right amount of red, and it has to be that perfect shade, if you're like me, uh, then I would go for the mini because because again, you're able to incorporate that color without having it, without having it speak too too much. If that makes any sense, so that's what I would do. Um, but regardless, they are all beautiful. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is either, because I got married in a red dress. Maybe that's where it stems from. I don't know. My mom, her favorite color is red, so maybe that's actually where it's from. Uh, but great question. <clears throat> Bags of jewels. I want to sell some of my designer bags and I'm wondering what you would recommend. I have sold on consignment sites, but they take such a large commission. I would like to sell them on my own. Do you think setting up an Instagram account to sell works if you do not have an active YouTube channel showing all your purchases and loves? And how is the best way to handle payments from buyers in your opinion? This is another great, great question. And I actually thought about doing a video solely on, um, on reselling your handbags. Uh, I know I did one a few, I think a few years ago where, Oh no, it was where to buy pre-loved or why, where to buy and sell pre-loved. I don't even remember, <laughs> but I even thought I thought about doing a video. So let me know in the comment section down below if that's something that you guys would like to see. Uh, okay. So I don't think you have to have an active, uh, YouTube channel in order to set up an Instagram account to sell your goods. Not, not at all. Uh, especially cause there's so many, um, people that are doing that now. And, uh, personally I would only accept PayPal. Uh, that's actually what I accept. Uh, that's the only form of payment because I feel it's the most secure. So that's what I would do. But no, you definitely don't have to have an active, uh, YouTube channel. So good luck, my dear. Uh, all oh, right. Uh, Lori knows luxury. Do you think you can fit sunglasses in a Chanel wallet on chain? Say the Dior so real, for instance, maybe like a thin aviator along with just a cell phone and keys. Great, great question. Okay. So I have a demonstration for you guys today and some show and tell. Uh, here I have the wallet on chain. I don't have, and I don't know if you want me to use a six key holder, but I will just so you can kind of get an idea. Uh, and I don't have the Dior so real, but I do have a thin pair of aviators that we can, um, just kind of demo on. And my phone is in the living room because I never, I never have it in my filming area because I just know that, uh, it'll end up going off and I just, I don't know. I don't want to do that. Okay. So empty wallet on chain aviators and there they are inside your six key so if you had a regular if you had a clay then you can use that as well um okay so i'm able to put this the uh the key holder in there however it has to be right on top of my sunglasses uh in, even if i try to put it on its side it does not fit this will end up protruding out just a little more than i would like 
maybe you can put them this way. So you can if you have them kind of popping out, but obviously when you go to close it, it'll end up, you might end up damaging the inside of the wallet on chain. So you definitely don't want to do that. So I wouldn't recommend it. It does close. As you can see, it does have a little bit of a gap or um, it kind of uh, stretches out a little bit more because of the six key. Um, actually you can close it, but again, I would just be careful because of these edges, but it doesn't look like it would fit too comfortably. Uh, again, if you had a clay or if you just had maybe one key, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Uh, but as you can see, maybe if I did this, let me see. Cause if you're like me, I always want to get into my sunglasses and my keys the quickest out of any of my handbags. So here I have them kind of on top of each other. And now the little key holder sticks out a little bit. I'm still able to close it, but I don't know. I feel like I'm going to ruin the leather. I feel like this is going to be, this is the sunglasses are going to end up jabbing the side and then end up uh, ripping it up. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend it because it looks like it wouldn't fit. And usually when I do carry my sunglasses with me, when I have the wallet on chain, I either have them up on my head or, um, on my, you know, on my collar, which a lot of people don't like to do that, or I just leave them in my car. Uh, but I personally would, um, would avoid putting those uh, items in there, but your phone would fit obviously, but these guys are a little, these guys are definitely a whole lot of deadly. Uh, Rosie Nunez, do you think that the Alma BB is a bag that after a certain age you shouldn't be using? I'm going to be 38 in September. Do you think it's a bag for any age? I don't know. Do I sound crazy? Does it even matter how old you are to rock any bag you really like? Uh, fantastic, fantastic question. And I have two words for you, Rosie, two words. Hell no. To the full extent of both words, hell no. I think that age is just a number. You're only as young as you feel. You're only as old as you feel. I don't care if you're 10, 15, 20, 100. I think that you can rock any handbag at any point in time. And I had someone in one of my videos, I think it was, um, it might have been the previous Minx Monday, uh, that they said that another YouTuber said that speedies are, you should only use a speedy if you're young. Okay, first of all, I am no spring chicken, let me tell you. But 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 I can tell you with certainty, I will be using my Speedy until I am 60 years old. So I don't even care. I don't even care how old you are. I don't think any I don't think any handbag has a certain age limit that you can only use it for. No. I think they're an accessory. I think it is an extension of our personality. And if you want to rock that Alma BB, you rock it, girl, and don't even worry about what someone else might think as long as you like it. As as long as it makes your heart sing, that is all that matters. Age group, pff, no, mm -mm. at least that's not, I don't feel that way, <laughs> you know, but um, that is just my humble opinion. <laughs> And the last question from Diana G. I'm hoping to get your perspective on the functionality of the Chanel boy bag and particularly the chain strap situation. Is it easy to carry? Is it heavy for everyday use? Is the chain slash strap difficult to manage? I recently parted with my Chanel jumbo due to its weight and the chain digging into my shoulder. I have shoulder problems and although I love the jumbo, it was too painful to use. I purchased a classic medium large flap black caviar gold hardware to replace it and love my new purchase. Congratulations. Awesome bag. I am thinking about adding another classic bag from Chanel to my collection and debating between the boy bag and a medium large flap in a different color. What are your thoughts? Fantastic, fantastic question. Uh, okay. And I did bring out my, um, Love boy bag. So we have uh, some show and tell and some eye candy. Uh, and this is in the new medium size. Uh, I really do love this handbag. It's so comfortable to wear. And when you compare this to the jumbo, it is a world of difference. This is extremely lightweight. I wouldn't, I didn't think that at first because the chain itself is very heavy. And I think this is actually the heaviest part of the bag, truth be told, but it's still super, super lightweight. I love the size because it fits so much. And I would have to say that this this particular size, the new medium, is the closest to a jumbo. Now, I know a lot of people don't think that. A lot of people think that the medium large is the most comparable to the size, but I feel that it, well, I personally think that it's closer to the jumbo because of how large it is. Okay, so is this comfortable to wear every day? Yes, it is. Uh, there is one thing that I would have to say is fussy about this handbag, and I discussed it in, um, in my review. 
and it is definitely the chain. Now, with classic flaps, even though the uh, the chain isn't stationary, I still feel that when you move it around, it's not as fussy, and whether you put it as a double strap or whether you use it as a longer strap, a long shoulder strap, I think that it still works, and I think that it's still very, very comfortable, especially the medium-large. The medium-large is an amazing, amazing size. Uh, but when it comes to this, even though they're not stationary, I feel that the chain ends up being a lot more fussy than I thought it would be, uh, especially because you have part leather and you have part chain. So here you go, especially this part right here. Sometimes I feel it gets caught on this little ring and you have to, you kind of have to mess with it a little bit in order for it to sit right and then you can kind of continue if that makes any sense. So sometimes when I pull it out of my car and I go to put it cross body or I go to put it on my shoulder, it'll kind of be, let me show you guys. It'll kind of be like this and it'll sit awkward on my body. Then I have to adjust it so that the leather part is on the top part of my, uh, of my shoulder here. And I think that's the biggest con on this bag. I do love the, how boxy it is. I love the size of it. I love how lightweight it is, but the chain is definitely fussy. Uh, it's not so much to the point where it takes the joy out of using it because of all the other pros that it has, but it is a con. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and say it's the best bag in the entire world. No, because this bugs. It does. And sometimes it gets caught like this. Sometimes it moves around. So it is a little bit fussier, but it's still very comfortable to be able to wear. Now, if I was to pick between the, um, the medium large and the Le Boy bag. I love both of them and I think they're completely different bags, uh, but I definitely appreciate the medium large a lot more because it's not as fussy. I think that is the ideal size. It's not heavy, it's perfect. Uh, and if I was to add another classic flap to my collection, it would end up being a medium large because I just, I'm crazy about the size. Uh, and even though the jumbo is my holy grail, that medium large is just a joy, a joy to use. So if you want to add a little bit of a variety to your collection and you don't mind so much the fussiness of the chain because it is it is apparent at least I feel at least I feel it is I don't feel I'm making a mountain out of a molehill uh, and if it's if it's something that you're okay with then I would go for the Le Boy bag but if you want something that's very very you know not fussy at all very very easy to use very beautiful still I would go with the classic flap at least in my opinion all right you guys so that does it for Minx Monday Q&A I know I had a few <laughs> a few tongue twisters in there. Uh, okay, and I will be letting you guys know what I will be doing for my 100th, which is next week, um, MMQA. I haven't decided yet. I don't know if I'm going to be doing it live. I'm trying my hardest. Um, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the webcams. I want to make sure it's good quality because sometimes it can be really, really grainy. And uh, if I do end up doing it uh, live, then I will let you guys know. I will either post a quick video of letting you guys know what time it's going to be at because obviously I, I wish I could do it for every, uh, excuse me, for every time zone, but I cannot. But I will come on here and I will let you know what I'm going to do. If I don't come on here at all, it's because, I don't know, I'm going to do something <laughs> completely different because my anniversary is actually uh, this week. So I have a lot to get done and I'm actually going to film two videos today. So tomorrow you will see my what's in my bag. And then on Wednesday you will see my the unboxing of all my goodies. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, if you guys want to ask me any questions for Minx Monday Q&A, please ask them on the most recent MMQA. That way it's easier for me to be able to see them. Uh, and I end up closing the questions... Um, I end up responding usually on Thursday or Friday. So Friday is the last day to be able to submit your questions, uh, either if I respond online or whether I, uh, I, answer, I answer them here um, on, <laughs> on camera. My goodness, I had a brain fart right there. Uh, but again, I will, let you guys, I will keep you guys posted uh, for MMQA 100. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all tomorrow. And as always, make it a fabulous day or not. The choice is yours. Have a great day, you guys.